What's up guys, Justin here with the RenderingEssentials.com back with another Lumion video for you today. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the new features contained inside of version 11.3. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, I will link to the release notes page that talks about all of the changes that are contained inside of this new version in the notes down below. So if you wanna read through those in detail, I will link to those in the notes down below. But um, let's go ahead and let's run through these new features. So first off, and obviously the biggest new feature is the shadows for the Omni lights. So previously, um, when you added lights inside of Lumion, and you know we have a couple different kinds, if you wanted shadows, you usually had to do something kind of with the spotlights. Um, and if you added like a point light or a light fill, for example, it didn't cast shadows, right? So if you click in here and let's move this up, a little bit. Notice how there's no shadows being cast. Well now what they've done and it's not the fill light but it's the omni light. So if you were to add an omni light right here and then we'll go ahead and we'll move that up. If we add that omni light notice how that light is casting shadows inside of this space. So the cool thing about that is now you can use an omni light in order to cast those shadows so that's gonna make our renderings a lot more realistic, right? You don't have to play around with adding different directional lights and other things like that. You can literally just add an Omni light in here in order to get the shadows that you want. You, you can adjust the shadows a lot like you can on the, uh, the spotlights. So notice how there is a tool in here for um, shadow exclusion. So what that means is that means, let's say we were to move this light down, maybe over a little bit, you could set this so that there's an exclusion zone and anything inside of the exclusion zone, it's no longer going to cast those shadows. So notice how when this intersects with this table right here, the shadow isn't gonna show up anymore. So that is a great new feature. I think it's a really good improvement inside of Lumion. So next is the multifunctional clipping planes. And so what that means is that means that we can now add a maximum of three clipping planes inside of our scenes. If you remember, you can use these uh, planes in order to clip things out. And so now you can add up to three clipping planes inside of your scene. So if I click in here and let's say that we were to place under utilities, a clipping plane, right? So what we can do is we can use that in order to clip out multiple different things inside of this rendering. So we've got this plane in here. We can move that up and down, for example. But let's say we wanted to bring this in and get kind of a view of the front side of this building. Well, now you can add another clipping plane like this. And then we're just going to rotate that one. So we're going to rotate that from a pitch standpoint just like this. So now we can use that in order to get kind of a front on view right here. So you can add those multiple planes in here in order to really dial in the stuff that you can show in your renderings. So note that you can also set a target layer to clip if you only wanna clip out one thing. And you can also place or move those clipping planes to any layer. So you can also now add silhouette coloring for the 3D characters. All right, so let's say we were to add, um, let's go with this man African 008 idol. So we're gonna bring this model in, hold the rotate key so he's facing my camera, and then I'm gonna click. Well now, if we select this, there's an option in here to colorize this model. What that means is that means that instead of this model being a like actual textured model in here, you can use it as kind of a placeholder. So you can adjust this so that there's different shades on it so you can take people models and you can place them in here just colorized rather than having all the textures in here so a lot of the time this is something that you might use if you don't want to distract from the overall rendering but you do want a person placeholder in here so you can use these in order to do that really quickly inside of this new version so what they've done with this version is they've improved the group selection function what that means is that means that you're going to be able to group objects together um, in a way that makes them really easy to edit so for example, let's say that we were to create a new scene. So I'm gonna go to my files, create a new scene, and let's add just some vegetation real quick. So we're just gonna add a couple trees, maybe like a couple beach trees like this. Well, right now, if you needed to move those around, that could get a little bit annoying because you'd need to go in, select the multiple different trees, and then move them around 
like this, right? Well, what you can do instead is notice how when you select these, this window pops up. Well, we can click on the button to add current selection to group. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to group these together. Well, notice how now you get all these little lines moving to a central point. Well, now what that means is that means that this group can be edited all together. It can be placed on a layer and you can use this to edit multiple different objects really quickly. So um, if you have something that you're going to reuse a lot of or something where everything's going to be tied together, using the group function makes that really easy. So you can edit that group by clicking on the edit group function and then you can edit these individually or you can also ungroup them by clicking on the ungroup or you can also save that group so that you can import it in the future. All right, so they've also given you the ability now within the grid settings to render out the actual dimensions in here. So if you do want to spit out a rendering that actually shows you some different distances or some different dimensions, you can do that using the rendered grid and measurements tool. So there's an option under your grid to set this so that it'll render or not. So there's also been some other improvements which you can check out inside of the release notes over here. So things having to do with removing a lot of the object restrictions on the fine detail nature, um, some changes to the different effects in here. So there's an interesting one in here where you can apply the material highlight multiple different times to highlight different things inside of your renderings. So there's definitely some interesting stuff that you can check out there as well. So if that's for a minute in this video, leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Do you like these new features inside of Lumion? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.